Welcome everybody. This is um, a video I'm making to go over multiple choice question number one. And I'm also going to just say some general comments about multiple choice questions on the AP Computer Science exam. Hopefully clearing up some misconceptions about what kinds of things you'll be asked to do on the multiple choice section. One of the first misconceptions is that uh, you'll be asked to find little nitpicky mistakes. Is there a semicolon? Those kind of like syntax errors. Not true at all. The question, the multiple choice questions, you can assume they'll never be those kind of little nitpicky mistakes. And uh, that really it's going to get to the same kind of problem solving and critical thinking um, that we do on the free response section, hopefully we do in class. So you don't need to worry about little nitpicky, oh, there's a semicolon missing or things like that. Um, there's also another misconception is that you should just be able to look at the question and see exactly what it does. And that's not the case at all. The, the key skill in all the multiple choice questions is pretend that you're a compiler. I'm, most of the multiple choice questions, you're going to look at some code, it's going to look a little bit confusing, and the way to do it is to just go through it line by line as if you were Blue Jay executing, executing the code. And that's very much what they ask you to do. Probably about half the questions ask you to do that. This question is very typical. There's this method called mystery. I would say something like almost half the uh, questions on the multiple choice section involve some, some method called mystery. Um, so what we're going to do here is that who knows what this method does? It's a mystery. It takes a parameter uh, array, and this is the formal parameter. Down here it says the actual parameter is nums. So nums actually is array. The key, the skill I want to show you next is probably the most important thing that you can do to tackle a question like this. And that's doing exactly what I do in class when I go through some code, is you actually want to draw boxes to represent variables. So hey look, there's a variable x here. Let's actually make, this is kind of fun, me drawing, oh gee, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, how do I do this now? So you've got to watch me fumble with this. Oh no, no, what do I do? Oh no, that's the button I want. Okay, here's a variable x. The current value of the variable x is 0. And then, this is exactly what I do in class. Pretend I'm writing this on the whiteboard. You should be doing this when you're doing these multiple choice questions. Have a pencil in your hand and draw boxes to represent variables. No one in the world, including myself, can look can tackle all these multiple choice questions without writing some stuff down. Then, hey, look, we got a variable k inside a for loop. Let's make another variable. Here's k. k. Oh, gee. K, this is kind of, oh gee, what am I doing here? Oh geez. K, K. I did practice this, by the way, unsuccessfully. Here's K. Pretend this is a K. Okay, that's K. Okay, and K starts out also at zero. So what we say here is look, X equals X plus array bracket K. What's the current value of K? Oh, it's zero. So array bracket zero is the number three. And we say x equals x plus 3. So this 0 over here, x is no longer 0. x is now, oh, come on. It's much easier actually to do this with a pencil. x is now 3. And now what happens to k? Normally we say k plus plus, but here it says k plus equals 2. So guess what? X, k is no longer 0. k is 2. And then we go back in the for loop x equals x plus array bracket, current value of k is 2. Well, what is array bracket 2? 0, 1, 2. It looks like array bracket 2 is 1. So then x equals current value of x, which is 3, plus array bracket 2 is 1. So guess what? x is now going to be 4. See how I'm just draw. I'm just going through the code. That's a 4. I'm going through just executing the code. Now k is no longer 2 because we say k plus equals 2 here. k is also going to be 4. And now we go back in the loop. x is 4 plus array bracket 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Array bracket 4 looks like it's to be 1. So x becomes 4 plus 1, which is 5. Oh, that, that's a 5, trust me. <laughs> Hold on. There we go, it's a 5. Okay. And now we plus 2 here, so k now becomes 6. And then we go back in the loop, x equals x, which is 5, plus array bracket 6. Array bracket 6 down here is 2. 
So x is no longer 5, x is now 7. And then we say this turns into a big old 8 because we plus plus it. And then we stop because k is no longer less than array dot length. And we return x, and x is 7. So it looks like the answer down here is c7. Was, what was the trick to that? There really wasn't a trick. I just literally slogged through it, drawing uh, boxes to represent variables. Probably half the questions on when I made up the solution key literally just draw boxes to represent variables. That's the key thing is just go through it line by line. Line, don't try to understand exactly what it does. Just be the compiler, be a robot, be Blue Jane. Just go through and execute it line by line. Um, I wrote up some just generic kind of comments here. The first thing is exactly what I just said. Most questions ask you just to trace through the code as if you were a compiler. Don't try to do it all in your head. Do the technique I just did, which is just draw boxes to represent variables. Okay. A couple other little things. In class, we've been doing a lot of print line. Print line actually is in the ACM console program library. Um, computer scientists don't in Java don't use that universally. So if you see system.out.println, that means the exact same thing as print line. Print line is for the ACM libraries. Um, but if you're not, not using those libraries, you have to do a little more complicated syntax system.out.println. Don't let that confuse you. It means exactly the same thing. People in like the real world use system did out that print line instead of print line. Um, you'll see the question we just talked about used the word static. For right now, you can just totally ignore that. Um, we'll talk about it in March, basically. But nothing on the multiple choice questions I've give you requires the understanding of what static is. Just pretend it's not there, and you'll be fine. And then the last thing I think is actually one of the harder things, which is when I do some of these questions, I find myself thinking, what is the purpose of this method mystery? Who wrote such a code? Why the heck did they do it in this kind of goofy, convoluted way? That's not your job on the multiple choice question. Don't ask such questions. Just be a compiler. Be, be Blue Jay and go through it line by line. A lot of the questions, the only reason the code exists is just to test you on something. Very often the answer is, why did they do this? Because they wanted to write some multiple choice question on the AP Computer Science exam and just go with that. Okay? And thank you very much, you guys. And I'm going to make a couple more videos going over some of the other